Otis Redding was the greatest male soul singer of all time. Otis Redding was the good guy who came through. And his record company executive, Jerry Wexler, described him as a natural prince. And that's what he was. Otis Redding was a seminal soul artist and really represents the history of soul music breaking into the mainstream in the US. Otis Redding was one of the most significant and recognisable voices in soul music. On the 9th of December 1967, Otis Redding and his band, The Bar Keys, were due to fly from Cleveland, where they'd recorded a TV show, to Wisconsin for a, a live show. They were travelling on Redding's twin-engine aircraft. Climatic conditions weren't great, but Otis Redding wasn't a man ever to miss a concert. And shortly before he flew, he phoned his wife, he spoke to one of the children, but the others were asleep, and his last words to her were, I want you to be real good. Then he left, got on the plane, and the plane almost made it to Madison, Wisconsin. And then it crashed, killing Otis and several of the Bar Keys, who were his new backing group. In the days after his death, Otis Redding had been scheduled to perform on The Ed Sullivan Show, The Johnny Carson Show. He was going to record a, a song with Aretha Franklin. He was going to do another album of duets with Carla Thomas. So he's at the height of his career. That just adds to the tragedy. Sitting on the Dock of the Bay was released in January 1968, very shortly after Otis Redding had passed away. Um, and it actually became the first posthumous number one in US chart history um, and sold incredibly well with over four million copies worldwide. The subsequent album, The Dock of the Bay, released after the death of Otis Redding, uh, went to number one in the UK and number four in the US. Uh, again, you know, after his death, people bought his records. Otis Redding was good financially. He looked after his money and he certainly liked the good things in life, but he wasn't extravagant, he wasn't stupid. He invested his money well. He had created Otis Redding Enterprises, and in 1967, the final year of his life, he actually made a million dollars from his performances, uh, royalties, and publishing, which is an incredible amount of money now, let alone in 1967. Otis Redding got a Lifetime Achievement at the Grammys in 1999. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But I think the best term I've heard is from the Songwriters Hall of Fame, where he was praised for his glorified exaltation, which I think is a very nice way of putting the way he sings. Otis Redding never got old, so he never got dull. And I think his legacy is that he could be a soul man, he could be a businessman, and it's still what might have been. Not only were Otis Redding's songs classics in their own right, but he was also hugely influential on other artists. So um, Respect, for example, was covered by Aretha Franklin and was an absolutely massive hit. And more than anything, Otis's legacy is the fact that he performed in front of huge white audiences and broke down the barriers between black and white music in the US. Otis Redding sang through barriers. That was the point. He wasn't seeing people in terms of race or colour. He was open-minded and a wonderful singer and, from all accounts, a fantastic guy who just wanted to give people something.